Uh, coaches, thank you for joining me today. You're coming off a victorious weekend and an emotional weekend. How have you as a coaching staff and your players kind of come over the news of this last weekend and how have you prepared for this weekend's upcoming competitions at home? Well, you know, I think the announcement was, was a hard pill to swallow for many of our kids, but, you know, we sat down as a team and discussed it and uh, it was a decision that was, you know, beyond our call. And uh, we've tried to, tried to rally them behind kind of our little slogan of the school may be done, but we're not done yet. And I think that how they approach these last six games uh, will tell a lot about their character. I think you have two choices. You can be a quitter or you can be a fighter. I hope they choose to be the fighter, and I thought this past weekend we did and got a positive outcome. Uh, two great wins on the road at Quincy, and then the big win Saturday after the emotions of Friday evening's announcement. Uh, the Saturday game against Truman, I thought we played extremely well. And I, I just think our kids right now, I, I told them carry the flag and let's win as many games as we can down the stretch. And uh, I've got to think there's going to be a lot of people pulling for them if they got there and play with some heart and, and uh, some toughness. and. Uh, some grit about them and, and understand that it's not a time to feel sorry for yourself, it's a time to, to audition for, for the future. And that's kind of how we've approached it. And I, I think our kids have handled it pretty well, have practiced well, and uh, I'm pretty pleased with what I see. And it is heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking for these kids because of the uncertainty that, that's ahead of them. But uh, you know, they've handled it, handled it well. Uh, Courtney, you have avoided our press conference up till now. <laughs> So uh, we'll start with a more serious question with you. You kind of stand between um, it as both a student and on the coaching staff. So you've been a part of both sides of it. What have you seen from your standpoint coming through this news and how have the players been handling um, the transition that's up, uh, up ahead of them? You know, it's, it's heartbreaking as an alum because this place has been my home for four or five years now. And it's just like, you know, you wish you can have a place to come back to. and. As much as it's not the case anymore, we're, we're just trying to push through. And, and the team's been really good about it. They've really uh, embraced the fact that they're going to be the last team to wear a Puma uniform. And like he said, just trying to fight and win till the end. So. so you've taken this year the position of a graduate assistant. How has that been different from your time as a player? And what have you personally hoped to get out of the experience uh, coaching alongside Steve and Mark? I mean, it was a great opportunity, and I'm really grateful for everybody that's allowed me to be here at this point. And, you know, I've learned a lot. I've learned about, you know, being patient with the girls and stuff like that, trying to be as encouraging as possible. Uh, I think my role is more in that aspect rather than trying to constructively criticize anybody. But, you know, it's just been a fun ride, and I'm really thankful that I got to do it. So. You uh, now get to start a slew of home competitions, GLVC competitions. Um, which must be a good mental uh, boost to your players in these times, but also in the driving stretch towards the GOVC tournament. Can you speak towards how being at home now and not having to worry about being on the road you, uh, will affect your guys' preparations and practice and what you hope for the approach to the GOVC tournament? Yeah, I'm excited to play these last five at home. It's, it's always more challenging to play on the road, and I think the effort that we got on Saturday against Truman Hopefully it's a good sign of what we can expect down the stretch. Uh, we certainly have a lot to play for uh, with the conference tournament coming up and the possibility of getting a home game in the conference tournament. So um, we have a lot to look forward to, and I'm excited to see how the girls respond. With all of these home games coming up, do you have a specific message you want to impart on the student body or the alumni that are looking on to the remainder of uh, this basketball season? Well, obviously we would love to see people come out. Uh, support these kids and we're not looking it's it's not about pity it's come out and uh, appreciate the fact that you know we get to do this for five more times at home and uh, uh, honor these kids and you know I, I would love to see our student body come out I'd love to see the community come out and just get you know fully behind the teams and and, and mainly behind St. Joseph's College and uh, let's uh, you know we, we've been talking about let's go out in the blaze of glory let's let's fill this place up and let's get people here to show their appreciation for all the hard work and effort these kids have put in. Focusing on this weekend's competitions, what sort of preparations have you been making in practice to go up against um, your games on Thursday and Saturday, and has it kind of been a unified game plan for both of these teams, or have you been specifically focusing on certain aspects for both of them and kind of dividing your time amongst that? Well, I mean, Coach does a lot of, of film watching for me here. This has been a crazy week. I feel like an agent for our players right now. but. Uh, we've been able to, to structure practice plans that involve our male practice players doing uh, uh, things strategically that we will see in, in the upcoming games against both Rockhurst and Jewel. Both of them are outstanding teams that are coming in. Uh, 
and games that we really need. And I, I hope our kids and, and the preparation that we've been putting them through and, and amazingly, I, I mean, our practices have been solid. I, I've been, you know, I'm real appreciative of the effort and the attention that these kids are paying to what we're trying to get done. And, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll come out on the positive side, but, uh, you know, it's, it's preparation is normal for us. As has kind of become a staple of these press conferences, we usually try to end on a relatively comical or unexpected question, and you can already see Courtney's preparing. I know it's going to. <laughs> um, but we'd like, before the question I prepared, uh, take this opportunity for any particular question either of the coaching staff would like to direct towards their GA while they're, while she's on camera. Wasn't expecting that, Pat. <laughs> give me a, give me a second. See, it's unfair to just put Courtney on the spot. We're going to have to put everyone on the spot in this situation. Courtney, what's uh, what's been your most embarrassing moment as a player? Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, all right, I airballed two free throws at Lewis, <laughs> and that was super embarrassing. But you know. Top that, Pat. <laughs> I don't know if I can, but we're going to see if she's going to be able to rise to the challenge that her counterpart on the, males t on the men's team was unable to achieve. If there were a TV movie about you, who would play Courtney in the movie? And, I, wh and why? Oh. I, well, I have my answer of Rachel McAdams, and my that, I don't really have a why. I just like her. I think she's a really good actress. So she would portray me well. Would you guys agree with that assessment? Does her face she turn has red to be, easy? Stop it! Fire <laughs> her brown. I don't know if it is brown. Well, thank you, coaches. We wish you luck this weekend, and look forward to hearing, uh, seeing your progress throughout the rest of the season.